This is a lot of wires, and I'm not really the best at cable management. But what this also is, is my DIY system to control these tortoise switch motors using an Arduino. Yes, MRR2 is back up on its side, but we're putting in some heavy electronics here and we're getting pretty close to where we can sit it back down for good. And today I'm showing you guys the installation of my entire switch control machine that is Arduino based. And I'm gonna explain why I chose to do this, but let's go ahead and get started with the construction of this. First things first, we need to attach some electronics and I'm using my tried and true method of just some simple hot glue to attach the three motor drivers that I will need. Again, all the parts are going to be linked in the description below. Next, I go ahead and attach the Arduino Nano Shield. I'm using an Arduino Nano to control all of the turnouts, and this Nano Shield puts these terminal connections in there, making it easy to wire up. Now it's time to wire everything up, and I'm going to be using wires with DuPont connectors on them. These actually work really great for putting in these terminals for little short runs. Now, each turnout needs two wires to connect to the motor drivers, so I'm going to be using 10 pins on the digital side. Fortunately, I have 13. So that is what we're doing right here. Now, one of the big reasons that I use those DuPont connector wires is that the motor drivers have the DuPont connectors on them, which makes them extremely easy to wire up. Now, they have one, two, three, and four on the pins. So one and two control one of the motors and three and four control another one. Now, if you're wondering to yourself, this is all great, Jimmy, but how do you know what to wire up and how am I supposed to know what to wire up? Well, I've done an entire video on how not only to wire up a tortoise switch motor, but using slightly different components, how to do a snap switch, and I'll link that at the end of this video. All right, so what I just did was I am using digital pins 2 through 11 to connect to the motor controllers. Now, what this is is basically you gotta have two pins per controller just to tell the motors which way to go if you're connecting this to a regular motor. Now, we're gonna be using this to throw the tortoise switch motors in two different directions. So, I have all these pins and I've connected them right here and that is what we are doing right there. To make things easier for wiring everything, I'm going to attach some terminal strips that will make connecting wires a whole lot easier. This one in particular will be used for the five buttons that will control the turnouts and also for the power and ground connections. Now I'll need five connections in total and I'm hooking up the buttons to my analog pins which will be A0 through A4. And each one of these will connect to the terminal where I can split it off and ground the button so that it can read properly. I'm also going to connect a five volt connection, a ground connection, and a VIN connection which will power the Arduino. This right here, the red wire, is going to be my five volt connection where I can connect things to five volt power from the Arduino. And then I'm also going to connect a ground wire right here that's this white wire right here and then I'll also have the VIN connection which is the black wire right here that is what's going to bring power to the Arduino from the eventual 5 volt hub that I hook up. Now because I'm going to have so many ground connections that it might be too much for that single terminal port to share, I'm actually going to put an entire separate smaller terminal strip in just to handle all of my ground connections. I do this using some jumpers to connect all of the terminals together. Next up, it was time to hook up all of the ground connections, and this is a lot of wiring. And you're probably saying to yourself right now, Jimmy, this is a ton of wiring period, and I'm having trouble following it. Well, the bottom line is if I tried to explain all the wiring, this video would probably be between 30 minutes and an hour long. But what I did was made you a schematic with everything, and I've attached it to the GitHub file with the sketch to load onto the Arduino, and I'm gonna put a link to all of that in the description below. 
Now it's time to wire up the Tortoise switch machines. Tortoises have eight connections on them, and connections one and eight, which are on each end, are for controlling the switch motor. So we'll need to go ahead and attach wires to pad one and eight. These are very easy to solder to. As a matter of fact, they've got a little hole in them that you can hook a wire through and then just drop a little bit of solder. I know that there are connection terminals that you can put on these, but I've never had an issue soldering a tortoise switch machine. Um, it's a super simple process, but all you have to do is that and then we can hook them up to our motor drivers so that we can power them. The L298M motor driver can control two tortoise switch machines at the same time. One of the two terminal connections is for one motor and the other is for the second one. All you have to do is connect your wires there. It doesn't matter which one goes where. It only matters if you are going to be doing some signaling controlled by the Arduino with the tortoise, then you'll need to know which one goes where so that you can have correct signaling. But that's a whole other issue and we're not tackling that today. Now it's time to install our 12 volt terminal power distributor. You've seen me use similar ones to this on MRR1. They work great for distributing power. They also have a barrel plug jack so that you can just plug any 12 volt DC power supply into it. And then you just connect wires to it and you're ready to go. This one was slightly different though, and I'm going to go over it at the end of the video. This will eventually be used to power anything 12 volt on the layout. Right now, it's just going to be used to power the three motor drivers. So I'm just gonna connect those wires up to it. Again, it's a little bit hard to see right here, which is why I created that schematic in the GitHub page, and that is linked in the description below. Now I'm going to need different voltages for different things on this layout, so I figured I'd go ahead and install a different voltage uh, power supply here. Originally I was going to do 5 volts, but I'm actually going to end up having this be a 9 volt power supply. This will power any Arduinos I have without any risk to any of the circuitry. Sure, you could do it without the 12 volt power supply, but this works just fine too. I use a DC barrel plug adapter to go ahead and connect to the power input on this particular terminal. By the way, I use hot glue to attach this one too. That's why you saw me just push it up there. I'm gonna have all these parts linked in the description below. And then the next thing that I did was just connect the wires that are gonna run power to the Arduino. I then connected my wires from that terminal to my Arduino using the terminal strip that I had right here, which made wiring it a whole lot easier. It's a lot easier to do these big screw terminals rather than the tiny ones on the Arduino Nano Shield. One of the last things that I did was connect all of the ground connections to the button wires of where they're going to come into the terminal. Now, at first I actually did this incorrectly and I had to do a fix before the final product and I'm going to actually go over that in just a second. Next, I put some power on the layout itself by using some Loctite power grip to glue a power strip onto one of the legs. I always like putting a power strip like this on the layout, it makes it really easy to power. And then we're gonna plug everything in. Before I get to running it, I needed to rewrite my Arduino tortoise switch motor code to be able to handle five tortoise switch machines. This is a really complicated thing right here, and it's also very specific, so I didn't want to do a whole tutorial on it, but I am going to put this code up on my GitHub page along with the schematic, and if you want to check out how to control a tortoise switch machine with an Arduino, I've done a whole video on that like I mentioned before, and that will be linked at the end of this video. A couple of things that gave me a little bit of a headache that I wired incorrectly that I just want to go over. One was originally I thought I could just do one resistor for all of the buttons to go to the ground. So I had one resistor right here. Well, that didn't work out and my signals kept getting crossed. So what I ended up doing was doing making these little resistor jumpers with 1K resistors that are put in some heat shrink that connect to wires. And these little jumpers are for each of my five buttons that are going to connect. And that fixed everything. Just has a 1K resistor resistor connected to some wire that are doing my from the button connection to my ground terminal. Now the other thing that actually gave me a lot of headache and I think it's because I've never encountered one that was created like this is the my 12 volt terminal strip right here and <laughs> The reason that it gave me a headache is A, I didn't look at it properly because I bought a ton of these and it looked identical to the rest of them, but 
it actually has little spots for different terminals with your positive and negative rather than having one side be positive and one side be negative, which is what literally every other terminal I've ever used like this had. So I had everything wired up and I could not get my motor drivers to turn on, I have these little lights right here, and I could not figure out why. And then I looked at it, I actually had to grab my voltmeter and I tested it and I was like, oh wait, this is where I'm getting 12 volts, not across this. So I just rewired that and that fixed that right up. All right, everything is wired up and powered up. And the only thing I have right here is I haven't done buttons on the fascia yet because I plan on making a panel, but I have a little test button wired up right here and we can just see how everything works. So we can see now that everything works. Now, there's a lot simpler ways, frankly, to do these tortoise switch machines. And you're probably wondering why, well, Jimmy, why did you decide to use an Arduino and all this complicated wiring to do the tortoise switch machines when you could just use some toggle switches or something like that? Well, first of all, it wouldn't be me if I wasn't using an Arduino. But second of all, this is going to allow for a lot of potential customization. So let's say you want to control multiple turnouts simultaneously with specific functions and things like that. Let's say, for example, you have a yard ladder with these or another type of turnout that you can just modify the code for. You can tell a button to actually control and align switches rather than having to do the manual itself. So you can just have buttons on the specific sidings of a yard ladder rather than having to flip two turnouts, you can just hit that one button and it'll align everything simultaneously. And because I've done everything right here, all I have to do is do some modifications to the code that are fairly simple that would be able to control all of these. So when you are looking at something like this, it's not necessarily the simple solution, but it's going to allow for upgrades and modifications and more complex things down the road. So doing all of this work now is going to make things simpler if I want to try something different. Like let's say with my runaround track, having both turnouts on each end throw simultaneously to realign everything. So that's why I did all of this. I've still got a lot of work to do. I got to put all the buttons on the fascia. So obviously I'm not going to be reaching under the layout and grabbing a button. So I got to make that panel and put that on there. So I got to make my button leads longer, but everything's just going to hook up right here. It's going to be nice and simple. And I've got to do some cable management because that's not that great. That doesn't, I got to, I got to do some better wire management. <laughs> So that's what I've got going on. I'm nearly finished putting all of the electronics in for MRR2. A lot of cool things going on here. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.